Hello everyone, it's Miss Angela from the Fort Worth Public Library. Welcome back to another Fort Worth Nature Center Discovery Club story time. Today we are talking about cacti. Do you know what that is? Cacti is how you say more than one cactus. One cactus, two cacti, ten cacti. Our song today is one that I made up. It's fun to make up songs and it's a great way to practice your storytelling skills. Here we go. Cacti is more than one cactus. Some have arms like this, let's practice. Some are straight and some round. What kind of cacti have you found? Oh, cactus, cactus, you live where it's dry. Soak up the water and protect your supply. Cactus, cactus, you spiny old plant. I want to hug you, but I know that I can't. Cacti store water in their stems. Spines help keep creatures from eating them. Some have flowers and some fruits. If you're hiking near them, you'll want boots. Let's sing the chorus together one more time. Oh, cactus, cactus, you live where it's dry. Soak up the water and protect your supply. Cactus, cactus, you spiny old plant. I want to hug you, but I know that I can't. Our story for today is a book. It's called Cactus Hotel by Brenda Z. Guiberson, illustrated by Megan Lloyd. Hmm, Cactus Hotel. Do you have a guess about what our story will be about? See all these animals around the outside of the cover? I think that's a clue. On a hot, dry day in the desert, a bright red fruit falls from a tall saguaro cactus. Plop! It splits apart on the sandy floor. 2,000 black seeds glisten in the sunlight. When the air cools in the evening, an old pack rat comes out and eats the juicy fruit. Then he skitters across the sand. A seed left clinging to his whiskers falls off under a palo verde tree. It is a good place for the seed to drop. A spotted ground squirrel looking for something to eat does not see it. A house finch chirping high in the palo verde does not see it. After many dry days, a heavy rain falls on the desert. Soon a young cactus sprouts up from the ground. Slowly, slowly, the seedling grows. The Palo Verde tree protects it from the hot summer sun and cold winter nights. After 10 years, the cactus is only four inches high. It is just big enough for desert ants to climb on its spiny sides. After a rainstorm, when the desert blooms with color, the cactus pulls in water with its long roots and looks fat. A young pack rat stops to drink the water that drips off the tree. Drip, drip. Then she scurries off, looking for a dry place to make a nest. When there is no rain, the cactus uses up the water it has stored inside and looks thin. The Palo Verde tree loses its tiny leaves, but there is always some shade for the cactus below. After 25 years, the cactus is two feet tall. A jackrabbit cools off beside it and gnaws on the green pulp. But when a coyote moves in the distance, the jackrabbit disappears into a nearby hole. After 50 years, the cactus stands 10 feet tall and looks straight and strong beside the old Palo Verde. For the very first time, brilliant white and yellow flowers appear at the top of the cactus. Can you see them way up at the top? Every spring from now on, the flowers will open for one night only and then close in the heat of the day. They beckon like a welcoming signal across the desert. At different times of the day and night, birds, bees, and bats come for the nectar. The flowers dry up, and after a month, the bright red fruit filled with black seeds is ripe and ready. A Gila woodpecker comes to eat. He looks around the cactus and decides to stay. He has found the perfect place in the desert to begin a new hotel. The woodpecker goes right to work. And the only tool he uses is his long, hard beak. Tap, tap, tap. He bores into the flesh of the cactus. Tap, tap, tap. 
He digs deep inside to make a space that is comfortable and roomy. The cactus is not harmed. It forms a tough scab all around the hole to protect itself from drying out. The woodpecker gets a weatherproof nest that is shady on hot days and warm and insulated on frosty nights. And the cactus gets something in return. The woodpecker likes to eat the insects that can bring disease to the cactus. After 60 years, the Cactus Hotel is 18 feet tall. To add more space, it begins to grow an arm. A woodpecker has a new hole in the trunk. Farther up, a white-winged dove makes a nest on the arm. And down below, an old hole is discovered by an elf owl. The birds feel safe living high up in a prickly plant where nothing can reach them. All around the desert, there are holes of every size for ants and mice, lizards and snakes, rabbits and foxes. After 150 years, there are holes of every size in the cactus, too. The giant plant has finally stopped growing. It is 50 feet tall with seven long branches. It weighs eight tons, almost as much as five cars. That is a heavy cactus. Everybody wants to live in the cactus hotel. Birds lay eggs and pack, rat, pack rats raise their young. Even insects and bats live there. When one animal moves out, another moves in, and every spring they come for a special treat of nectar and juicy red fruit. Finally, after 200 years, the old cactus sways in a gust of wind and falls with a thud to the sandy floor. Its great thorny arms crumble in the crash. The creatures that lived up high must find other homes, but those that prefer to live down low might move right in. A millipede, a scorpion, and many ants and termites quickly find homes in the toppled hotel. After many months, all that remains are the wooden ribs that supported the cactus while it stood so tall. A collared lizard dashes over the top looking for insects. A ground snake huddles in the shade below. And all around, there is a forest of cacti slowly, slowly growing in the desert. Through hot and cold, wet and dry, some will survive long enough to become other cactus hotels. The end. Today is actually our very last Discovery Club collaboration. If you want more story times, head on over to your local library branch or to fortworthlibrary.org where you'll find information about our online story times as well as in-person programs happening this summer. I've had so much fun working with Mr. Michael and sharing with all of you. I'm going to pass it on to him for one final time so you can learn more about cacti. Thanks so much for joining. Hello everyone, this is Michael Perez at the Fort Worth Nature Center and Refuge. And I want to welcome you to our last Discovery Club virtually. We still are here at the Nature Center. We're still doing guided hikes and programming, summer camps, all sorts of things that, um, that cater to our audience. So definitely check our website for all those guided hikes and programs. But this is our last virtual Discovery Club. Uh, I want to thank everyone who's been faithful and attending and watching and participating and learning um, with COVID. This was a great way to get out there and let all our young, young budding naturalists know a little bit about nature and kind of see what's going on here at the Nature Center. Also, it was a wonderful opportunity to collaborate and to work with uh, Miss Angela at the Fort Worth Public Library. It's been a wonderful uh, time. Uh, working with you, Miss Angela, and uh, hope to work with you again in the future. And hopefully, I know you've enjoyed her story time and her lessons, and we greatly appreciate the added value she has to our Discovery Club here at the Nature Center. So, uh, this month, the month of June, our theme has been kind of the summer, okay? And this week, we're starting to, uh, or last week as well, feel the effects of summer with these 90 degree temperatures and so forth. Last uh, session, uh, we talked about the sun, and we did talk about how it generates heat, and uh, that's important for a lot of plant life. Now, we may not like that that hot heat on a summer day, but it is very important. The sun's very important to us. So today, we're going to talk about one of the uh, aspects of nature, a component of nature, uh, that can withstand uh, the summer heat, and I'm talking about the prickly pear cactus. I kind of have some 
Oh, I left my arm there. You can kind of see some right there. Right behind me, I'm just sitting at a remote location just on the refuge out in the, out in the, the middle of this beautiful place. So uh, just enjoying nature. And we're going to talk about, about these cactus, uh, cacti. Uh, prickly pear cactus actually is our state. We talked about this in a previous Discovery Club, how it's our state plant. Prickly pear cactus is a state plant. So let's talk a little bit about the plant itself. Uh, you can find it all across our area. Uh, it's a very, very important plant, uh, both for us and wildlife, and I'll get that to in a second. But when you look at this plant here, um, you'll see it's a different plant, okay? Uh, it has a deep root system. It has a stem, just like other plants, and it has leaves, but they're all different, okay? Uh, the green portion of the plant that you see here, uh, that actually is the stem, most people look at that and think that's the that's the leaf if you will but no that's not the leaf that's actually the stem and all those little spines those little spikes that you try to and want to avoid those are modified leaves that's right a thorn you think a thorn's a thorn right but in the case of a, uh, a cactus those are modified leaves so those are the parts of the cactus the cactus that you see above ground and again it has roots below some shallow but long long uh, root systems so this uh behind me you can't see all of it but it's kind of like a like a micro habitat if you will if you i'm looking around other cactus uh a cat where you find cactus is kind of like a mini habitat so let's think about some of the purposes uh uses for a uh, cactus when it comes to wildlife well for wildlife around an area like this that has all this cactus behind me it's like a microhabitat. It's a place for them to find food. So there are small little uh, insects and bugs that hang around the cactus. And then larger uh, animals such as lizards, uh, they come and eat those, uh, those insects. And then the snakes come and eat the lizards. So it's kind of like a little microhabitat, if you will. You think about habitats like uh, around here, you think about the, the forest and the aquatic systems. You think about maybe uh, the rainforest and so forth uh, further out of our, our area. But this cactus, where all you find is the cacti, it's kind of like a little microhabitat. So it's kind of a special place. So if you want to see some wildlife and some uh, small wildlife, hang, kind of hang around these uh, cactus pads. You may see uh, a lizards running around or little cactus beetles. Also, there's a, a, a little insect on uh, the cactus. The little, it looks like white, like mold, like it's rotting, but it's actually from a cochineal. And it's cochineal they attach themselves to the, the cactus and then other insects may uh, wanna uh, join them. And then of course the lizards and snakes come. And again, it's like a little micro habit. So, so cactus are important for wildlife because it, it provides food and it provides shelter uh, for wildlife, like a little micro habitat. One of the other things, once you see that uh, the fruit come up, deer just come and eat that and other forms of wildlife. So it's like a food. It's like a little mini restaurant, you know, if you will, a grocery store for wildlife. So the prickly pear cactus is very, very important uh, for food and shelter for wildlife. For us, uh, it's, it's really important too. There's some uh, places, you go to Mexico, uh, and, and here in Texas, of course, you can go to the grocery store and you can see they sell cactus. Uh, so as a food source, you can make foods out of like jellies, uh, candies. Uh, so cactus for us, it is, it is food. So it's food for uh, many, many individuals, but it also has some health benefits too. Uh, uh, cactus, you can use cactus to help uh, doctors and researchers are using to fight um, like diabetes and high blood pressure or high cholesterol, I'm sorry, uh, and also prevent viral infections. So it has a medicinal value too as well. So not only functional for us um, for food, but also medicine and then wildlife for food and shelter as well. But Kind of going back to our theme, again, month of June, as I have beads of sweat that come down me, um, let's talk about how it adapts to this type of environment, the hot. It, it, you can find cactus in hot, dry areas. Well, how do I adapt to that? Well, there's several things that they can do. Number one, if you look at, if you get close to one of these cactus, uh, you'll notice that the outer part of that stem, there's a nice, um, thick, waxy skin if you will and that thick waxy skin allows for uh, the water to be stored and contained 
and it's very little water loss so you don't see very much water that's being a loss uh, from cactus also the cactus there have the ability to because of that waxy substance thickness of it have the ability to reflect heat or that light so again they don't uh, they don't uh, absorb that that heat it reflects off of that which allows them to to maintain and keep that stored water inside of those stems not the leaves the stems uh, to store water uh, now that's how it adapts to the heat thick thick waxy coat to uh, basically keep all the water inside and then also to reflect the heat uh, but also and then it stores water so other ways it adapts it has to adapt to wildlife now we all we said that cactus is uh, is a source of food for animals you know turtles will come and eat the pads and other animals uh, or use the cactus uh, as a place to hide but more importantly animals eat it so having those spines on it allows those modified leaves uh, in the form of spines helps protect uh, that cactus from being consumed at a great high level uh, from wildlife so that's something that's very important as we said earlier uh, it does store the stem stores water so the root systems are pretty deep they can also be very expansive they go horizontal but deep uh, to bring up water uh, the groundwater the water that set, settles uh, beneath us beneath the soil that, that's called groundwater those root systems can actually pull up that groundwater store the water in its, its stem to keep that plant to continue to grow so you can see it has many different adaptations uh, for its survival uh, you want to be very careful around it you don't want to touch it because of the spines they can get in your skin and irritate your skin and um, that's something that you uh, definitely don't want to uh, experience so uh, that's a little bit about cactus uh, again uh, it's an important little microhabitat for little insects and lizards and snakes so you kind of view it you know get by it and look at it and see that microhabitat we talked about how it's useful to humans for a source of food. You can make Kelly, uh, Kelly's. I was combining jellies and candies. You can make uh, jellies and candies. And again, uh, some places it's just part of their diet. Okay. Also, it's used to help find cures of diseases. Like to, uh, think about uh, diabetes and high cholesterol. Things that you don't have to deal about. Uh, maybe not have to deal with right now. Uh, but it's really important for that. And then uh, for wildlife, a place to, to shelter and to find food. And then the plant itself has really good ways to defend itself. Okay, having spines, having that thick, waxy leaf uh, skin, if you will, to uh, to uh, protect it from losing all that water that they get from the, those deep root systems as they get that water from the uh, groundwater, or get the water from groundwater. So that's a little bit about cactus. And I encourage you to come out here to the nature center. We have lots of cactus to see uh, and a lot of potential to see wildlife hanging around the cactus but as I said earlier this is our last discovery club and it saddens me but also it just it's a it's a good sign of things changing you know again the whole point of discovery club was to bring nature to you since we were closed and things were just kind of on the back burner but now that we're ending these discovery clubs it's a sign that things are changing you can come out to us and visit us and see us and go on our tours and our hikes and be one-on-one -on -one with us and we encourage you strongly strongly to do that uh, we're out here we're open seven days a week uh, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, during the summer uh, summer months up into the end of September so come out and visit us we would love to take you and your family on a hike on a tour whether it be on land or in water so uh, thank you again for tuning in for this week's edition of Discovery Club, our last edition of Discovery Club. Uh, but it's not the end. I don't say, um, you know, farewell. I say see you later because I am going to see you later because you're going to be here uh, visiting us and we're, we're around for you. So uh, as I've always say, go outside, discover nature for yourself. Uh, until I see you again, have a great day, a great weekend, and again. We will see you again. See you again. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.